go see him, like deciding where to see him. It's a fun little resource, but deciding who gets it for the price is still something that can be planned for and is planned for by OPEC. OPEC situation is different if the U.S. military backs directly your puppet regime through military application. But of course, that was, you know, not the original idea. It was George H.W. Bush that the, the, the uh, Persian Gulf War was a set piece to present to the world, I think, is a good best way to think it. Would not have America taking over the world. It would have America as the chief enforcer of the global economic order that benefited America, maintaining that system. And sure, you know, the rising tide raising all boats we think that they liberalize the economy. But the US didn't have to stop in time. We soon found out, oh no, this thing's a lot wickedly, more wickedly than we thought about. And America's centrality to the global capitalist economy was getting to the point where it was conflicting with the greater health of the organism. And when that happens, to, when you have a conflict between the self-interest of the national host organ for global capitalism and the world economic order, the world system, you get a removal of uh, headquarters from one country to another, from the Netherlands to the UK to the United States. And we are at the point that the UK was in by the 20s, and that the Dutch were in by, uh, at least by the 1700s. But we like them are fighting it. And we fight them the way that at the end our fighting comes down to actual enemies in the field. And that is why we're probably going to fight the Chinese and make them take it from us instead of peacefully hand it over the way that the Dutch and the English do. And it might just come down to cultural difference. You know? Could it just be that like the Dutch could hand over the reins to the English and feel like, well, we're going to be taken care of by that arrangement. And the British could certainly feel like, especially after we saved the last World War I, because the, we, they owed us enough money that it was in our interest to see them win, uh, they were happy to turn it over to us. But can we turn it over to China, which is not part of our, our you know, cultural heritage, our linguistic uh, background? And yeah, it's like, does that mean proxy wars? I don't know. I don't know if the U.S. can be poor. And I don't mean that with my terror. I mean, kind of in every sense, culturally, politically. To do proxy war, I mean, I, I, I feel like, uh, to, um, to, um, to do proxy war with China, because, Drop dropped in Afghanistan so that there was no remaining stomach for any troop on any size of it. The taxi wars eventually brought in your side. I think we're just going to end up going in both troops first without even having a proxy war uh, in the media. Russia isn't really a threat to anyone. I mean, we've, we've hyped it up in terms of who began in this country precisely because of its relative weak position. Because it's reassuring to imagine that it's just the Russians who are worried about it.
kind of a different story. It kind of is the heat bath on the whole thing. It kind of is the U.S. is the huge benefit. Even though our economies are, and our, and our political and economic systems are essentially uh, integrated. I can look, compared to any tax, uh, political or economic order that exists on Earth, relate, and, and you compare their, the, the relationship between the political and economic systems of different countries. If you have the sort of interconnectivity that the U.S. does with China, you would look at it and say, oh, that's one organ. We would have a school of thought because this is best referred to as one thing. And of course you have nerds on the other side saying, actually, I think that they're distinct enough. But the, it would be on the table that these are essentially the same political, uh, uh, the same political economy. And yet, we're in a real trajectory towards armed conflict. This is insane. And, and the madness, this madness is at the root of the rationality of Western capitalist theological liberalism. It is, it is a rationality, a rationality of, 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 of crisp, uh, reinforcing, and this is the most important part, uh, uh, effectively utilized rationality. A rationality that can be weaponized and directed towards uh, scientific and technological advances that gives you like real force multipliers as a social order. This is a rational order that... Uh, affirms for everyone within it its usefulness every day by its fruits. It's built on a fundamental irrationality. That there can be there can be a non-holistic relationship between members of the human species and members of the human species and their biome. And that means at the end of capitalism, what do you have? One Knitted together, global, social, political, economic, or media uh, machine, a supply chain that operates throughout the entire globe using global standards and an agreed upon legal framework to transact trade relationships. This is the dream of any communist. But instead of that machine working towards the benefit of the people and, uh, and lives within it, it is tearing them apart, destroying them, driving everything against them, including the two biggest economies in the global machine, the two biggest nodes of production and, uh, and uh, administration. And instead of recognizing that interest, we're going to pull each other in. Ten 
they just flex their power by pulling all out on boosters in a way that the other uh, post-broadcasts are freaking out about. To get their appetite for you uh, And also, it's just all pulling out of NATO. itself as a religious war, which meant that as religion receded uh, from the public sphere, uh, the impact of the uh, memory of that war sort of faded with it. But as, you know, the, as the Enlightenment went on, as bourgeois nationalism crossed the old new order on the earth, if you are in France, you are created for national Or, 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 
capitalism as such, the real generator of the it was this cultural revolution for people who were coded as less educated. It was a way to distinguish themselves from the American code, and also from the repulsive uh, Muslim, the, the, the vile Mohammedan.
position to draw a red line for Saddam diplomatically and even push him and the Kuwaitis towards some sort of deal. That deal could have involved, among other things, the Kuwaitis laying off on the money that Saddam owed them uh, for oil, I'm sorry, for loans that he had taken out during the Iran-Iraq war. Instead, what the U.S. did through its Iraq ambassador, April Jackson, is they had just gone and they said to him, come back in the face, we have no interest in your defeat of the Kuwait. It is not an American priority. It is up to you to resolve. Then he resolved it by invading Kuwait. And then he decided that we had our people, our new globalist society. you have a three-month economic downturn at the precise wrong moment, uh, 18 months later, you're out on your ass for some hillbilly fucking carnival. How would you do this snake to me? Salesman shit kicker. Show me the same. Some hip-jumped fucking uh, redneck to take your shit. Some fucking hippie. 